In this video, we're going to take a look at the, the precise binary search algorithm, precise enough so that we can actually program it. Um, and we'll, if we get to it in time, we'll program it in Java in this video. And so here is the algorithm. Remember, I look in the middle of my collection. What do I have to know actually first before I use binary search? I have to know that my collection is sorted. My array or my list is sorted. And I'm assuming I have an array or a list where I can access each element by index and that the time to access by index does not depend on how many elements I, or which index I have ask for. Um, but I have to know that my array or list is sorted. So suppose that I do know that. And suppose I am, I'm going to leave myself some room here. Suppose I'm looking for, looking for the number, oh, I don't know. 35. 35 is a nice number. Let's see if we can find 35. I want to know, yes or no, does my array or list contain the value 35? Now, remember, I'm going to start in the middle, whatever I consider the middle to be. We have 10 boxes here, so actually the middle is going to be box 4 or 5, and it doesn't matter which we choose. It's going to turn out in our code, it's going to be easier to choose box 4 first. So we'll look in box 4, and suppose the answer is 12. The value in box 4 is 12. So I say, wait, that's not what I want. So now we look and we find the middle of the remaining region. And so let's see, the middle of that region is right here. And we look at that. And let's say that's uh, 42. 42. 42. And I look at I discover that's 42. And I know now that 35, if it appears in the array at all, appears in one of these two boxes here. And so I've narrowed my search to being one of these two boxes here. And so here's the key idea I want to take away from this. As I'm searching, I need to keep track of the range in my array or list where the value I'm looking for might be. And so right now, the range is that, uh, let's write this out, my value could be anywhere from index 5 to index 6, the one I'm looking for, right, 35. Before, before that moment, the value could have been anywhere from index 5 to 9. Before that moment, it could have been anywhere from 0 to 9, right? So at the beginning, my range is the complete length, uh, the, the complete range of my array, from the lowest possible index to the highest possible index. Um, maybe I should say inclusive, meaning I'm including these two indexes in my range. Is that going to fit? Yeah, that fits. All right. Uh, so I need to keep track of two indexes as I go. And so if you've ever seen someone or, or you've looked for a name in the phone book yourself, you've discovered that you actually find yourself with two hands, one holding the beginning of the range of the phone book you're still looking in, and one holding the end of the range of the phone book that you're still looking in. And your hands sort of come closer together as you search through the phone book. So same idea here. We'll keep track of two, two ranges, or, or two indexes, and those two indexes mark our range. So initially, in this particular task, we were looking from 0 to 9. And then we determined that the value we're looking for was from 5 to 9. And then we determined the value was actually from 5 to 6 somewhere. So let's, uh, then etc. But of course, the interesting question is going to be, when do we stop? So I think I'd like to start writing the code itself. And that will highlight some of the the trickiness of, of keeping track of this range. But the key idea is we want to keep track of a range. We want a low index and a high index. So let's begin to write the code. OK, here we go. So I'm going to write my code in Java. But I think you could certainly imagine writing this code in another language. And it's going to be very similar. So let's see. It's public, so people can call it. It's static, because it doesn't depend on being called on a particular object. It's going to return a Boolean, because my binary search is just going to tell me yes or no. Does the array, I'll, I'll make my, my input an array A, does A contain a particular value? In fact, I'll call it target. It's the target value. It's the one I'm looking for. So returns true if A contains target. Where a is the name of my array. And you could imagine variations on this method, like tell me what index the target is at would be a, a, maybe a more useful method. But I decided I would like to keep things simpler and just say yes or no, does the array contain the target? And then, and then I think you can, on your own, look at some more 
twists on that behavior. So let's see, how do I start? Well, I said I want to keep track of a range, a low and a high. So let's begin with a low and a high. And they'll be integers. And my low index should be, well, it should start out being 0. And my high index should start out being the last possible index. So low starts out at 0. High starts out as the last possible index, which is, since my array is indexed starting with 0, the last possible index is the length of the array minus 1. So up here I had a 10 element array. I subtract 1, I get 9. 9 is my last index. So I know that target may appear from low to high inclusive. OK, so now we want to see if it does. So we are going to find the middle of the range. But note that I I determined that low starts at high and high starts or sorry, low starts at zero and high starts at a dot length minus one. That only happens once. But then I need to repeatedly find the middle and make some determination. So that sounds like it belongs in a loop. And I'm putting it in a while loop because I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to run through this, but I will know when I'm done. And that's usually a good time to use a while loop. Alright, so we have to check the value in the middle of the range, which means the first thing I need to do is find the index at the middle of the range. So how do I find index 4 given indexes 0 and 9? Or if I had 5 and 9, how do I find 7? What is the relationship between the index I'm going to look in and the indexes of my range, the ex extremes, the low and the high? And the answer is the middle index is the average of the two indexes, right? It's 0 plus 9, which is 9 divided by 2, and 9 divided by 2 using integer division, right? 9 divided by 2 is normally 4.5, but Java will truncate and we'll get 4, and we'll look in box 4, which is exactly what I did. And when the range is from 5 to 9, and we average, we say 5 plus 9 is 14, divided by 2 is 7, and that's the box we looked in. So that's the idea. To find the middle index by taking the low index and averaging it with the high index, which means find the sum of low and high and divide that by 2. And that will potentially truncate uh, so that if there was an, if this total was odd and we divide by 2, we would round down, and that's fine. Rounding up would equally be fine. It doesn't matter for our algorithm as long as we pick one of those two boxes in the middle. Okay, so now we know the middle index. What do we do with it? Well, we want to know what value is in that position. And that I can easily determine. That's a, a of mid. That's the value in that position. Now what, I wanna, what do I want to know? I want to know, is that value, I want to know how does that compare to target. And in fact, the easiest thing I should test for is, is that, is, uh, let's put it this way, does target equal the middle value? Because if it does, I'm done. I found the value I'm looking for. So I can celebrate. I can return true. OK, that's not too bad. What other scenarios do I have? Well, if target's not equal to mid, it could be that target is less than a mid, right? I need to compare and see how does the value I was looking for, in this case 35, compare to the value I looked at, which was 12. And actually, so in this case, 35 was less than 42. So now, what changes? when I determine that the value I'm looking for, my target value, is less than the value I just took a look at. Right, so let's say I'm looking for, what's a number that's less than 12? How about 3? I'm looking for the value 3. I open this box, it says 12. What does that tell me about 3? It tells me it must be on the left side. But what is going to change about my range from low to high to indicate that I should now look on the left side? Well the low part of my range doesn't change, right? I'm still starting at this box. But the high part would no longer be the end of the array in that case. It would be, it would, it would shrink. It would, it would decrease. And so naively, we might write, not naively, I think this reflects a, a great amount of tele intelligence, but we're going to see that it's actually a little trickier than that. When I discover my target is to the left, in fact, let's write that, target is lower than middle, then my high index is now too high. So my high index should decrease, and it should come down to the middle. And naively, we might think that that's all we need to do. High should become mid. But that's not exactly right. 
because remember, the range I'm looking at goes from low to high inclusive, and mid shouldn't be included in the range anymore, because when I determine that target is less than the middle, target my target value comes before the middle value, I should rule out that middle value. Notice when, when we were looking from 5 to 9, and we discovered the value should be less than uh, before index 7, we didn't change our range from 5 to 9 to be coming from 5 to 7. We changed it from 5 to 9 to 5 to 6. But sort of hard to say. Um, because I've ruled out not only everything to the right of 42, but I've ruled out 42 itself. So I must write high should become mid minus 1. And that actually turns out to be very critical. Because if I don't do this, we'll see that we actually get an infinite loop um, in our program once we understand what our stopping condition is. So we'll come back and revisit why. Why does it matter that we subtract 1? OK, seems like an odd point to stop my video. Um, let's go a little further, and then I think we'll stop. The next thing I want to do is write the last possible case. Either it's equal, or it's less than, or the target is target is greater than the middle. And in that case, I think you've probably figured out that when it's greater than the middle, it's the low part of the range that moves up. And it moves up to middle. But we don't want to include middle anymore, so we make low get the value of mid plus 1. So again, we might wonder why is it so critical that we add 1. And we'll take a look at that later. And uh, at this point, I've got a loop that makes a lot of sense. So the, the big question then is when to stop. And I will leave us with these, these big questions until the next video, and I'll see you there.